New Balance store on uh, on Danforth. I, they had a sale. I got two pairs of shoes for 180 bucks. Or something. It's really comfortable. Yeah, they're really comfortable. Uh, What are you trying to do, Steve? I, okay, that's, I, that's, the, that's you. That's me. What are you trying to do? do? You want it to go up? There you go. Now I'm towering above you. Yeah, I caught that. <laughs> you like school. <laughs> That's not going to work, Steve. Head down. Huh? Head down. Matter. You're, 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 you're I'm too tired. a little kid. Huh? You're like a little child. <laughs> Head down. You want me to put it down? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, it's exciting. Um, wow. So, David, I'm okay to go? Okay. All right, so, after much ado, here are the filmmakers. Fresh.
um, and, and more traditional, like uh, you know, talk at interview kind of film. So what happened was is that uh, Michael and uh, Steve went out to Vancouver to do some pre-interviews with John Zaritsky, um, you know, which kind of went south. They, they spent a lot of money expensive wine to talk about old times, and they came back with this footage of John had just lost his eye. He was heavily medicated, little addled, and he had gained a lot of weight. He was quite sluggish, and I got this footage back where he's sitting in this chair that looked like he was eating him. He was quite comfortable to be there, and I thought, you know, this isn't compelling stuff. Like, this is, uh, you know, th this is quite boring. This is an old guy talking about how much better things used to be and blah, 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 and, and who wants to watch that? Um, while they were out there, uh, John Zaritsky uh, started to remember how good it was to work with Michael. Oh, all right. Just before we go kick it back, yeah, just before we kick it back over to Steve, I just wanted to say one short thing. That while I was at Sheridan College, part of my sort of function where that I would have to listen to the first week, two weeks of school, to students pitch their ideas, the films they wanted to. And after a couple of years of doing this, it's the beginning of each semester, we have these showing their. And I came to the conclusion that there were three films, college They're either films about their brother's rock band, a zombie film, or they want to make a film about their gay brother slash sister. Those are the three films. And for, along I forgot the character. skateboard. Along came this person, and her ideas were different. They were more mature. They were more evolved, and that's what got my attention. And that's why I thought there, this person has substance that more to hang on. I haven't heard these ideas. That's what uh, got me. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so basically, what I wanted you guys. You had okay, the, the first film Jen alluded to, the first film we made together was a thing called The Adventures of Dr. Crackhead. Dr. Crackhead is a real guy. He lives here in Toronto. He's a published author. He's a research scientist at CAM8. Um, he's a professor at very good um, and he is addicted to everything you could possibly be addicted to. He is, he is off, I've seen addicts. Guys off the so that was something Jennifer was interested in, and Jennifer knew. That's how, how that film got made. She knew the subject. Zaritsky, the next film we did, I knew Zaritsky. I grew up in the same town as he did. School, although he was well ahead of me. Um, I've worked with him extensively, so I knew him. And so as you guys go forward and you start to consider now what's, what are you going to make your films about or what are you going to make? This is a big project. Telling you how big a deal this is. Pick something that you know. It, it, not, it, it doesn't have to be the front page of the you know the, the Globe and Mail. It's, it could be anything. It could be anything, but long you need to know it. Everything about it. That's how Yep. Okay. Zaritsky well, okay. Why Zaritsky? Why the crackhead? Jen had an interest in it. I thought her, her Thoughts were pretty evolved. We found that there was a market for it. Someone actually was going to put up some good money to make the film. That's how that got made. That's basically the scene of Zaritsky. I'd never seen a film 
about, well, let me back. I kind of got to a point where I was asking myself, like, what have you done with your life? You know, okay, you did this, you did this. But what have I really done with my life? And, and, I, and, and I, I've had a pretty good run. I've had a pretty good life. I've traveled all over the world and done everything. And, but I've never seen a film about a person like me. So I thought, I don't know myself all, you know, a little bit. And Zeritsky's the perfect guy. He's an Academy Award winner, not like nobody. I'll be nobody in this world. Uh, and I just thought that it, that is newsworthy. That is new. That is journalism. If that's a really good story. And the fact that he's not. There's, there's, sorry, there's, there's a few things you need if you're going to you know, proceed to make a film. The, the first thing, you know, I think Michael talked about is that you have to be passionate and interested in it because you're going to come across so many obstacles that unless you're passionate and interested in it, the obstacles are just going to see you and because you're going to lose your skin. Second thing is other people would have uh, Films are, are a, a populist freedom, so if they're terribly self-indulgent or if you're the only person interested in it or a small group of people, it's probably not a good thing. Another thing you need are resources. You've got to have other people that are willing to work with you. You've got to have cameras, money. And lastly, you have to have access. You have to have access to the, the subject that you're um, investigating. So unless you have all those things, then you don't have a film. And in these particular cases, lots of ideas that we have that are great ideas, but without all those factors, you don't have a film. Idea. <laughs> uh, we had a budget of uh, eight. Uh, well, this, I mean, a lot of it was timing. Sure. First, the first thing we had to do was get Zeritsky. So I pitched it to John. Uh, I don't recall. No, you. We were out doing the track. You did it twice. You pitched yeah, him I, a couple I, times. We pitched him out in Vancouver. Took him out for dinner. Six hundred bucks we spent. Said no. No six. So it happened that I was back out there about six months later, back in Vancouver, and I see him again. again in this. So that was the first big hurdle, get John Zeris. He's, he's a tough character. Um, then we, you know, then Jen and I had to sit down and write about something sent to, uh, the, you know, funders. Uh, we did that, and, and we found that, uh, you know, a somebody who was in so We had a little bit of uh, startup cash. Steve and I went off and have evolved over that period. But the first pitch we had to make, the next one was to Cowley and those people. But what do you think was telling about the broadcast? What well, was in it for them to, to finance our billion of other people? I think that they're interested. The, the 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 I think that they're interested, and in obviously, the, you know, their mandate is Dr. Film. So, how do you make these? It's not like a how-to. This is not a how. -to. 
completely different life road out. So I think they found that the fact that they were making another film with John, they were going to double down here. They also solidified. Saw him make also finance that. So they got two for one deal. So I think that John is a pretty charming guy when he wants. I, I think you know the people talk. Definitely a lot of luck. Yeah, which crisis? <laughs> well, there's one basically where you and I. Okay, this is the story I started to tell you. So I sent these guys out, their crowds, came back with this footage. While they were out there having this good, Mr. Zuritsky started to recall how good it was to work with Mike. All, all that, all that talk resulted in with Michael. Forget your film. You're going to work on my film. You're going to work on my polyamide film. I, I've missed working with you. You're going to be. You're, you're my guy. And as you could probably detect, Chris is a hard guy. He a decision like that really by. So what had essentially happened is that my there and then Chris ended up pushing my deal, my cameraman, my business partner. Michael was supposed to wreck. Wreck. So we still had an obligation to produce our film or documentary that Michael was now participating in our film, not primary, did some direction, um, but he was now the cameraman, so that left, and the kind of film that you're going to get when, when somebody like me is directing is going to be different film you're going to get with Michael. Film shifted from being more of a biopic sort of film to being a more observational, behind the scenes sort of film. Road film that. Always. If you'll forgive me. Yes. I'm trying to, what's your BS? You guys went out. 
So oh. why are you bothering me? Yeah. Going. Yeah. So you actually. So have any of you guys heard of Chris? Have any of you heard of just missing? So basically, it was a, a very small portion of people that know who John Zariski is. A lot of you know, um, old school guys from the CB, and, uh, people like that, that actually were invested in the story of John Zariski. So, the, so, so really, the, the audience for just hearing about John Zariski was really quite small. Um, so it had to become something bigger than that. It had to, and it had to um, do a couple of things. Had to kind of change it because not, none of you, I'm sure, would have dialed into uh, about. But what is interesting is the um, uh, process of filmmaking. What actually happens? What can happen when you go into uh, the kind of character? Because we had a juicy character that ascended it. Kind of character it takes for one of the make the sort of very, um, the very earnest social sort of film uh, are made by a particular kind of that, and, um, and also just show an arduous journey that follows, uh, that follows all those story points that you back, right? Turn, there's push and pull, there's... So we wanted to construct for assembled Story, real story, adventure, and that broader, and um, talk about gold. So basically, you was that in March. What what's the timeline here? When did the when did you conceive of the? Just so these guys have an idea. We conceived of the film years or autumn. Autumn of. But you, sh you shot, we shot it. Shot it in the spring of fifteen. He says twenty fourteen. He says hot fifteen in the. Right, but that 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 happened before. So the hot dog's appearance was the hot dog retrospective. Right. So that would have been hot dogs in the in the spring fourteen. We shot. Went, we took off over there, and we, we ended up in Scotland in what following March. Yeah, but he wants to he wants to talk about it separately. So we would have pitched that two thousand and thirteen to make CMF. Right application, December prior. So, I would have to say that that summer before, late autumn before, yes. we would have pitched it to Holly. We would have pitched it to the channel. He would have given us a little money, and then that, then following in December, and we would have got our app. Would have heard back in January. Yeah, these, you're, you're not playing in my strong suit here. Okay. For, for me, things but, just... So I think, I think we're talking 2013. Probably about 30 months from go to woe. Two and a half years. About yeah, 30 months from go to woe. About two and a like half that. years, yeah. 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 So, we'll start. so the moral for you guys, you really got to be in because you're going to be working here. So just the... Slight idea. That's not done. Wouldn't have. Um, okay. Uh, can you? I mean, I, I should talk, I guess, a bit about the film. But I'm kind of going to leave that. 
going to focus the the production and I, I think it's important to add how long the edit, how long was the shoot? It wasn't continuous. Go and we. The European portion. The European portion was one. Three weeks. And, and the overall. I would I would say a forty. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's one of the benefits actually of being a, a person like a cameraman uh, is that I can shoot when I want. Uh, so we never had to go out and actually hire. Some. And uh, so, you know, the, as you go along, if you're like really really serious about this, um, it's good to pick up a skill either how to shoot, how to cut, because there's there, those are huge money drains on any budget you can somehow reduce the cost of those things even maybe possibly put money in your own pocket because you're doing a job that you would have had to hire somebody that here go you could so try and find a skill i i suggest either camera or editing the easiest thing or sound right or sound yeah sound like any job in the in the in the process is is worthy of like nobody's more important than anybody else and um, there's some people make more money than others. They're all, everybody's important. So pick up a skill. Really important. You guys owned. We own our own camera. That's right. So good rent. Correct. And so the shoot took. 40, how, 40 days. 40 days. So okay. over three months. The edit was how long? Um, the edit was. One sitting. One, two. Finishing was. Oh, okay. Yeah. So basically, six months. Uh, the edit process, six months. And that means develop. Oh. Well, can you quantify it like. Yeah, it's just too crazy. Yes, like it's, it's, yeah. Okay, well, we'll, we'll um, I, I want them, I'm going to open up questions. But I think it's important that we talk. I'm not going to name names. I'm going to go crazy on details. Oh, hey. Nobody, nobody needs to be hurt. I think it's important to realize, you guys to realize, I say that a lot, it's important to you guys to realize that at the end of this, you know, this is, I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this as long as the risk. So it's almost, and I can tell you from personal experience that, you know, this is a. I don't care if no film. And. Uh, but it's a good film. But just because it's interesting thing, reception has been. Little filming. I'd like to talk. Wouldn't. So. Yeah, you do this. Um. Okay. So prior to making this film, John made another film about these eccentric people, and. The, and the company that he made that for is the same company that he made the thalidomide. There were some, there was some, some difficult, the, 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 the relationship between John and the production company became fractured during the production of the original film, first, uh, and it never recovered. Um, 
and it was a, a, a very difficult thing for John to go out and try and make the second or the third thalidomide film. It would be his final film, probably, uh, under those conditions. So he wanted to kind of fortify his, his scene, and that's what he The people that owned the production company are powerful people. They're high-profile people around town. And I, I think that they uh, just didn't want the didn't want it to be so generally known that there had been this break, what I refer to as crack. Wanted to kind of play that down. It's kind of like a bad marriage, right? As you, nobody wants to build it. But so I, I think that generally speaking, that the film was kind of like just the word went out that it, that this kind of delves and touches on that different. Additionally, John is a difficult guy. You can see a little bit of it on the screen, um, but it's pretty well known that he's a difficult guy. I, I, and I'm not exaggerating here. Back in the days that he was making just another missing kid, there were stories of him throwing typewriters at his boss. Um, and he did. He really did that. He picked a typewriter up, threw it across the room. He'd throw chairs, eat it. He's like he's nuts, and, but he, so there, there weren't a whole lot of people that, you know, this legacy followed him, and I, I found out like it, with you guys, he would love you guys. He would love every all, all of you because you're you kind of you're not trying to get him to do anything. As soon as you start to to make this guy do something, he doesn't want to do it. He's not going to do it. No way you can you can. It's like a spoiled child. He's do it. So that's part of the difference. So, so to Steve's point, yeah. he's talking about you can have a good product, you yeah. can have a good film. Yeah. Reception is underwhelming. Right. So bring it around to that. Other than I just don't think that the, uh, you know, the um, festival people were interested in going any further with somebody who was as different. That's my point. My take on it is be careful who you get in bed with. Um, a, lot of, a lot of what you see with, with John is that he worked with people that quite a, <coughs> he has an abrasive way himself. They had an abrasive way themselves. It didn't work with the opposition. And um, you know, his, his production company would have been the perfect people to, to, to promote our film and our film. There, there was a great opportunity to cross promotion that didn't happen, bad feelings, and all it. That probably, um, probably extended beyond just, probably there were things said that, that could have helped the film, but it didn't happen because um, how far with John's relationship with the, this production, our dealings with did bring it to, to uh, a film festival. It's competing with all other kinds of um, documents that are getting. That always happens with presence. Plus, support and back. It's easy to look over. Great films get looked over all Get out this. Um, everybody's with each other and. Um, Somebody on the board that social film, not because it's a better film, but because they want to support the social get a prize. It's all, you know, one of those that, like, careful who you get into bed with, feelings does. How many crap films have you, but you've gone to see them because it's had enough energy and social media. So just because something doesn't lift off the way you hope doesn't mean that all money, politics, network, if the timing of the film is right, if the, a certain uh, time and place so some are ahead of their um, 
what what the social that so yeah. Yeah, I want to Let me just say one other thing. The 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 uh, John's film, the Solidomite, you saw him making here, is a terrific film. And that film has got I think that everybody just there that people just sort of folded their cards and left. Which is unfortunate because Zaritsky's film is really good. There's there's plenty of really good films. There's the guy, the crazy man. Oh, we're not. Oh no, 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 I'm just saying that Calve. there's Calve. There's a C A L V E T. If you get to see that film, it's fantastic. But you're going to have to really dig to find it. Great film. Uh, there's another film out there called Not Dead Yet about a guitar player who ends up with uh, a Lou Gehrig's disease. He had a kid, 17 years old. He was. It was just starting out with, with Van Halen. And uh, these are great films that, for whatever reason, just don't seem to get back. But, you know, we look horrible. So there's plenty of good doc. I think element wall went. There's still cliques in high school. Guys. Well, I'm in this camp. Canada, no different. And there are certain people who are, quote, messed. Always, always, and on. And then, you know, there are people, I'm afraid. Who just won't walk down that road this time? It hurt. It's a complete mist of to have hot dog, which, by the way, is the number one. Number one. I know it's number one in North America. Number one in North America. It's number one in North America. It's a big deal. And in 2014, John Frisk received time at board, film red back, hand pick. And then two years later, Hot Docs declines to invite a film about to it. I I don't tech good somebody got to some it's so I don't know yeah be careful you, but how are you to know right it worked so many times it's not like us ball one award. He's a world-class filmmaker, shown it again and again. But I guess he just crossed the line. Anyways, on that unhappy note, uh, would somebody please like ask a question? I find that no matter how good final product, whether it's I feel like after so I want to know what would you guys for you apologize to me. <laughs> um, I was in a funny situation here in that because I was in the I couldn't take a direct hand in the editing of the film. And little those films never work. So Jennifer really handled the location work and the first cut. So we we got to the point where we cut Reed was 
We locked that cut. At that point, I got involved. Would I have done anything differently? Sure, I, I don't know. But I'm not going to admit it. I, yeah, I would have made the, I would have made the film. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I would have made that. I'm not. Yeah, absolutely. I'm convinced today that good a story today as it was five years. Ago. Um, I think that I wore an off. I wore a lot of. Wore a, Have a person for everything. not like a lot of it. I wore a lot of a lot of different um, out of necessity, but that doesn't. I'm good. Taking it all on. Um, if, if some, I can't be all. Creative that if I was allowed to concentrate on that on reflection, I could have some of my control giving up brain. So I spoke what I to keep it all under. Um, well, I, I mean, I was, I had money for, uh, I had that, what I told myself was, well, I put all that money color. Music, there's a music, music, you know, um. Um, so I'll do all that, that, you know, I felt safe because, I mean, like I said, I had a, a background in, but I think that stretched while I, especially while I was it, that I had stories story. My battles with story aren't creative battles, they're political battles, and Did all my energy, not a an introvert. Journalism and documentary track a lot, and uh, you have to really manage. So you know, you're gonna feel like if it, if everything. So I think, I think, um, yeah, now take a lot of it. I would have hired. I would have hired a production, or just no, no money. A lot of, a lot of elf, elf dogs. Zariski is just one kind of whack. Like I'm, I'm as sometimes as he is. He's difficult. She's difficult. There's a lot of control. So it's. Uh, uh, Thank you for your question. <laughs> That's I Uh, 
I, you know, I had to do adult, like there are a lot of egos. There wasn't always room for mine, and the truth is, is if you're going to be a producer, always be like your personality that you like, look for people on the Probably. Oh, uh, anybody else? How did your team deal with conflict with one another while you were filming, especially during hard times dealing with Don? But this is a question not just about Don, but about your crew. I'd say our, our crew got along really well, including uh, our, our time with John. There's little moments of where, where things would flare. Like I made probably a half a dozen little stuff that you saw in here. It was nothing. So there was really, I think we had a any. Yeah, well, I was pretty sick by the end of it. Yeah, um, we, everybody gets sick of each other, but I don't think anybody there's doing that. You, you might have noticed, you might have noticed uh, our, our, the sound guy, um, just kind of the role that he sort of played in the, how easygoing and nice. There are people in your crew that, um, that are natural buffers. I got to room with Justin. At the end of the day, you know, I had beers with Justin. I hung out. Um, but, you know, a lot, a lot of the conflict comes from, is circle. It's not, and you just need to get away from each other. Get, get as far as, <laughs> to create that space and to try adulting when, put your feelings aside, try adulting. Um, when, when you do, because you are bound, but especially in a crucible product, you're absolutely just like, let, let's, let's be civil, sleep on it, you feel better the next day, and you put it into perspective that you act like the circumstance that is putting it, not, not well, because, I mean, we 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 live to tell the tale, and we're still friends, aren't we? I hope so. They, they, they're really the, 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 the times get really tense in the edits. Oh you know, yeah, edit suite really a tough yeah. place. Um, but we got through that. We had a terrific editor, Deborah Palloway. If she would be somebody you should talk. To. Ever get the chance to have any more people come in and spend time with you? Deborah is uh, an angel, and she's uh, extremely talented and. Uh, but wouldn't you agree that we had some particular individuals around us that kind of wicked away a lot of yeah, attention yeah, by sure, virtue of them sure. being like... Yeah, young, funny. Cool. Yeah. 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 The young lady had a... Bob Dylan. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> We're out of time. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching our film. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Myself. Thank you. Um, well, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Wow. Awesome. Thanks, Steve.